Hello, everyone. My name is Lauren McManus. I'm a systems engineer here at AGI. I've been working with AGI for about four years now. And today in our tech tips, I'm going to show you how you can use SDK's volumetric tool to compute um, additional information about what a sensor on an object of yours might be able to see. So I'm starting this scenario with a UAV. Um, so I already have the route for my UAV, and I actually have um, two sensors on it. I'm just going to focus on this one here called the nose location. I'll turn that on so you can see what it looks like. This sensor is already making use of our body masking capabilities in SDK. So it's just a simple, or actually it's a complex conic sensor, but then um, I'm using a mask file here that's been generated based on the obstructions caused by the 3D model of this UAV. And you can do that yourself by um, just right clicking on any of your sensor objects, hovering over sensor and going to the Azel mask tool. So that'll just calculate the parts of the sensor that are obstructed by your 3D model of your parent object. So working with this field of view here, I'm going to utilize volumetric analysis to create grid points in a sphere around my UAV and do additional calculations as to um, both the percentage of this region of space that my sensor would be able to see and also which specific azimuth elevation uh, points I would be able to see with the sensor. So you can build volumetric objects um, in the components that make them up using SDK's analysis workbench on the spatial analysis tool here at the end. To start with, I need to define just my reference grid, um, and I'm just going to use a spherical grid around my UAV. Uh, the nice thing about this is that I can define the grid relative to my aircraft, so it will follow it wherever it is flying. And I'm just going to make it a uh, fairly small, so fairly close to my UAV, um, and build that up by going over here in the center of these buttons and using the third button down, which lets me create a new volume grid. There are several types of volume grids that I can choose from. For this application, spherical will work just fine. And I'm just going to name this spherical grid. My reference system is going to be my UAV's body frame. And then I want to set my grid values. So I want to go from 0 to 360 degrees in azimuth. And I'll make this a little bit finer resolution by taking 100 steps. And then I want my elevation to go um, entirely around as well. So from ne negative 90 degrees all the way up to 90 degrees. And again, I'll use 100 steps. And I want it to be fairly tight to my center of my UAV. So I'm going to make my minimum range uh, 0 0.015 kilometers and my maximum range 0 0.016 kilometers with just one step. So it'll be more of a shell of grid points rather than a solid uh, sphere of grid points, um, which kind of works just fine for this application, but you can do whatever you want here. So we'll say, okay, make note of the number of grid points that we have. And I can click okay here. And then this grid shows up under my components here um, in analysis workbench. If I click on my nose location, um, sensor, I can see there's a few different installed components over here to the right, and one of them is the sensor visibility. Um, so that calculates locations which um, our parent object here, so being the sensor, has visibility to the grid points. And I'm going to make use of that um, and actually constrain my grid uh, that I just created to only include the grid points that my nose sensor has visibility to. So to do that, I'm going to create another grid. So I'll click and create a second grid here. Under type, I will set it to constrained and call this nose sensor grid. So just the grid points that my nose sensor has access to. You have to use a reference grid in this constrained grid type. And I'll use the spherical grid that I just created off of my UAV object. In my spatial condition, it's actually already set to what I want, but I really just want this sensor and the visibility of that sensor. 
basically it's it's like an access calculation. Um, if you're familiar with our typical use of the word access for SDK calculations as to when can one thing see another thing. So when can the sensor see these grid points? So now my no sensor grid is located right here. Before I close out of analysis workbench, I wanna create one more component, which is a um, spatial calculation that's also based on my sensor visibility. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to kind of show you two different flavors of a volumetric analysis that ultimately show the same thing, but give you a little bit slightly different reporting on it um, based on the question you're trying to answer. So with my sensor selected here, I'll click the first button at the top that says create new spatial calculation. And I will call this um, nose sensor viz calc. So the visibility calculation. And instead of the type here, scalar at location, I wanna change it to be a spatial condition satisfaction metric. So spatial condition satisfaction metrics um, have to be built off of these kind of spatial conditions here. So there's a few installed ones and you can create your own. Um, so I'll do spatial condition satisfaction metrics where my spatial condition is again, my nose sensor visibility. And I can look at different measures of effectiveness such as the number of intervals, the number of gaps, the interval duration, gap duration, um, and time um, elapsed. If you're familiar with SDK coverage, these are very similar to some of the figures of merit that you can add to SDK coverage. I want to use the number of intervals option. And my accumulation type in this case, I wanna just do current time because the question that I'm going to try to answer with this is at any moment in time, is a grid point seen or not seen? So it's kind of a yes or no question. So I just wanna do it at that current snapshot rather than accumulated. And again, that will show up under my components. So now I can close down analysis workbench. I've done everything I need to there to start to do my analysis on these components and visualize my volumetric objects, I'll need to insert a new object into SDK and that object type will be volumetric. So insert new volumetric and I'll do define properties. And for this first one, I'm going to use that constrained grid that I created. So under the volume grid, I'm going to my UAV nose sensor and using that custom no sensor grid that I already created. And I'll click apply. Now I do want to quickly show you what that looks like here. So that's my whole grid shown um, around my UAV. It's a little bit hard to see what's going on. So I'm going to my 3D graphics grid and I'm just going to clean it up a little bit by turning off the grid lines and making the grid point size a little bit smaller. So now it's a little easier to see through it. And you can see that it's um, all around in a sphere, but I just have those two different steps here that kind of create the shell based on my range conditions that I set. So at this point, I can say, okay, and then I can right click on my volumetric object and go to compute. Note that there was an option to compute in parallel. Uh, volumetric calculations can be fairly intensive calculations, so you might want to scale out those calculations. Um, but I've made this one a pretty quick one by only um, setting my scenario analysis time to one second because this is a pretty stationary problem. Um, so I don't need extra time here. So I can speed it up by only um, computing this for one second duration. So when that computed, I see this green and red sphere. Anything that's green is an active grid point within my volume, and anything that's red is outside of my active volume. So I can tell that it worked, um, but that's not necessarily the prettiest um, display there. So I'm going back into my volumetric objects property under 3D graphics volume. And I'm just going to make the inactive points completely transparent and then change my active grid points to a little bit more of an appealing color and give it a little more transparency. There we go. So that looks a little bit nicer. I can actually see my UAV still through it. 
So there are all the grid points that are active. So that's awesome for visuals. But of course, SDK is always more than just a pretty picture. So I'm going to go to the report and graph manager for my volumetric object. And under installed styles, I can look at a report called satisfaction volume, which tells me, um, and again, it's just one second and it's static. So the beginning and end time are the same. But for this configuration with this one sensor, I'm able to see um, almost 44% of my region of interest. Um, and this is where you could say, well, maybe that sensor is enough, or maybe I need to add an additional sensor like this under wing location. And then you can combine those um, visibility conditions and see what kind of volume you'd be able to see from there. I can also see the volume in a, um, a volume sense. So in this case, it's kilometers cubed. And that might not make a lot of sense for this problem, but for your problem, that might be what you care about. So let me close that report and close the report in Graph Manager. And I'm going to uncheck that volumetric object and insert a second one. And this one I'm going to set up a little bit differently. So for my volume grid here, I'm going to use that original spherical grid that I created on my UAV. And then I'm going to provide a spatial calculation. So I'm going to check the box to fill in that field. And my spatial calculation is going to be based on my nose location visibility calculation that I created. So I can apply that. I'll change the same settings here to make my grid points not as big and click OK. And then right click to compute my second volumetric object. In this case, everything looks green because all the grid points are active because this was not a constrained grid. This whole grid, um, my whole spherical grid is considered the active grid for this. So everything looks green and that's Good, that's what we expect. So down here under the 3D graphic settings volume, instead of just showing the active versus inactive grid points, we'll wanna show the spatial calculation levels. And you can see here that the limits are from zero to one, because again, I'm looking at intervals at any given time. So it's just a binary thing. Yes, no, a grid point is seen or not seen. No being zero, yes being one. So I can insert values here and I'll just insert a value for one and I'll leave it as purple, um, but increase the transparency a little bit and apply. And now you can see a visual representation that's very similar to what we saw with the other calculation method, right? But the reason that we might do this method instead is if I go into the report and graph manager for the second volumetric method, I can do this report here called volumetric values at time and it will ask me what time to use, and I'm just going to use my start time. And this report will answer the question of, you know, for each grid point, can it be seen or not? So we know from the previous method that 44% or so of our volume was visible by the sensor. And now I can go in here and look at specific azimuth elevation points um, and range points um, and determine was it seen or not. So everything is going to have a value of either zero or one. And this is a report that people often will export and query the data from. Um, and between these two methods combined, you're able to answer kind of the full problem of what percentage of my region of interest can my um, sensor see? And of those points, you know, what are the specific um, azimuth elevation uh, parameters of those points?